Uh, good evening, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, and jin dobre. Uh, my name is David Madden. I'm the founder and executive director of International Academic Competitions, as well as the International History Olympiad. And it is my honor this evening to present to you a distinguished guest who has joined us uh, from Poland, uh, having flown in just yesterday. Uh, so Princess Angelika Jarosławska Sapieha is an international peace ambassador, an ambassador of the Polish Peace Corps, the initiator of the One Mine, One Life campaign against landmines, and a patron of several uh, or, uh, demining organizations. And she will speak about the greatest values of peace, the global anti-landmine campaign, reducing inequalities, and her work uh, with the importance of uh, humanitarian volunteering. She continues the mission of Princess Diana, Diana in the fight against landmines, uh, and she supports uh, many places around the world in anti-poverty efforts that reduce inequality through humanitarian aid, as well as the promotion of education and cultural initiatives. Uh, the UN Blue Helmets Committee uh, distinguished Princess Angelica with the Medal of Peace, and uh, for the fact that she has rendered eminent services to the cause of peace and the dignity of humankind in order to obtain a better world by promoting justice, international law, and social progress. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, give a round of applause to Princess Angelica as she takes the stage to share a few words with you about her work. Good evening. It's a great honor and pleasure to be with you today. I just came from Poland to see you and to congratulate you. You are here at the Princeton. You were taking part at the Princeton, uh, at the Princeton University in Great Olympiad, the largest, the most prestigious Olympiad. I'm sure that I'm sure that you should be proud of yourself, and I'm sure that you're parents who are here are also very proud of you. It's a special moment because you have a courage and you have energy to be here. I know that it's not so easy. All of you took part in the Olympiad in other language, not always your language, is also uh, a part of your courage. And it's also a great example for other children, teenagers, youngsters, around the world. Today I want to speak about something different, but also so important, because I believe that you not only have uh, royal minds, but also royal hearts. And each of you is a change maker. You are at the Princeton, at the Princeton University, you are in the United States, you came from different part of the globe, because you have great motivation to do something special in your life. So today I want to tell you about things which can be fixed, which can be changed by you, because you are the power that can change the world and that can save the lives today and tomorrow, really. As an international peace ambassador, for many years I was traveling to different places around the world from Europe to Africa, from Africa to Asia. I spent many months in other countries, in very wealthy and in the poorest places in the world. I spent nine months in Cambodia, many months during my travels to Africa. So today I'm with you, but today I want to speak for, as a voice for those who don't have any. And there are many children around the world, and teenagers like you, who look at you today, and they think that you can be the power that will change their lives as well. I will start with anti-landmine campaign and the situation about landmines, because you are mature enough to hear about this. Many children around the world live in a fear of being killed or injured by landmines. That is why I initiated One Mind, One Life campaign 
I will tell you today more about the campaign and why it's important. Today, 60 million people across the globe woke up in a fear of being killed or injured by landmines. I met many children around the world. Some of them, like you, have wonderful, beautiful dreams. Some of them were maimed by landmines. Sometimes these landmines laid in the ground for 30 years or more. So when these children were born, these landmines already existed and stayed in the ground. These children who are maimed by landmines are maimed on their bodies, minds, and hearts. You can imagine how it is when something explodes under the child's feet. So these children can't be with you today. It's not so easy for them. They live in different parts of the globe, and they want to believe that there is a good future and there is a hope for them. When I was in Cambodia, I met many children who were maimed by landmines. They had very homemade prothesis. They felt a great deal of pain, even though that it was years before. They couldn't go to school. They couldn't go to some additional courses because they were living in such a places where it was just not possible. I started to support organizations in Cambodia. I went for three weeks. I stayed more than nine months. Then I was in Thailand as well, other countries in Asia. I support and I'm a patron ambassador of many the mining organizations around the world. Even today, even right now, they are bringing help. They are working on the minefields. They took me to the minefield. I saw how it is when you are searching for the landmine, where it explodes in front of your eyes. And these children today are the voice who is asking for our support. You are here today, took part in the Great Olympiad. You are the future that will change tomorrow, not me or any of the adults here. Because children, I hope that you will not get angry at me when I say the children, some of you are teenagers already, of course, but the children are the future and are uh, our voice of the future. Children are the living messages to the time that we adults will not see. When I was visiting children in Africa, in Asia, many of them wanted to have an access to education. That is why organizations in Cambodia, which I'm supporting, are building schools, creating rural school program. Schools in the places, in the villages, where there were literally no schools, no running water, no electricity. And believe me, these children are so motivated, they really want to learn. There are many children around the world which don't have such a possibility. I met many children in Africa who don't, want, who don't go to school, but they are trying to do their best on their own. That is why soon there will be a premiere of another of my projects, a special books for children, but also for the adults, about the stories, about the people who I met on my path, because life is a journey. You are here, it's a part of your journey, very important part, because this Olympiad will always stay in your mind, will motivate you, will be kind of an engine for your future education and then your career. But I want to encourage you to think further, because no matter where you were born, no matter what you do, no matter what is your poss possibilities and your position, who are your parents, you have incredible power to change the life of other people. I met people in many places around the world who are bringing humanitarian support and they are truly heroes. A man who was first, when he was a child, took to the Khmer Rouge. He was a child soldier. He didn't have any choice. They took him for his, from his parents, from his family. He never saw them again. He was a soldier. 
And then when he get older, when the Khmer Rouge fall down, he became the one who was clearing Cambodia from landmines. A few years ago, he was called one of the top 10 heroes CNN. And he was just a small boy, then a young, humble man from Cambodia who didn't even speak English. He was trained by United Nations as well. I met Sister of Mercy, who was working with Princess Diana. She created a special refugee place, refugee center. She's helping landmine victims as well. And I had this great privilege and honor to work with the people who worked with Princess Diana. It was a long journey, but I feel, still feel that it's just a beginning. And One Mind, One Life campaign, few, few months ago here in New York, during the Commission of the Status of Women and CSW Forum, had its event, parallel event, One Mind, One Life. It's important what I want to tell you today. Why it's One Mind, one life. When I was in Cambodia, these people, these heroes, gave me a beautiful present. It was a bracelet done from landmines which were cleared, like the one which I saw when I was on the minefield in Africa, in Cambodia, in Asia. And this bracelet was done from landmines which were cleared, so this means that one life was saved. It was written in English and in Khmer, one mind, one life. So today, tomorrow, please think about those who you can help because you have such a power to be the power will ch which change the future. And to make a small step today, I have a proposal for you. You see a special table with One Mind, One Life campaign, and also with uh, the words, I want world peace. Today I want you to join me to make the pictures with these tables, but then also to make the picture with these tables with each one of you uh, personally. These pictures will be given to United Nations, but also you will find them on the website of the campaign One Mind, One Life. So you today, my dear friends, will become a part of One Mind, One Life and ambassadors of this important mission. Because I believe in you and I truly admire that you are today here because I know that you may support us to fulfill this mission in the future for other children and for other young people. So I encourage you to join me right now Please, and we'll make together this appeal, one mind, one life.